by immense challenges. Environmental issues generally and conservation issues specifically cut across almost all spheres of our daily lives. As such, we find ourselves at great crossroads in our country's conservation history. On one hand, there's a very real and urgent need to fast track long overdue infrastructure and other important national development projects to improve our productivity and make the most of our natural resources. The needs of our growing human population are exerting heavy pressure on available land and resources, including traditional wildlife habitats. On the other hand, the prudent conservation of our wildlife demands that we aggressively protect and even enhance these habitats. This will ensure that they continue to contribute to our economic prosperity, our environmental health, and to preserve our very precious heritage. The challenge of achieving a balance between the various pillars is becoming increasingly evident in the unfortunate human-wildlife conflicts playing out in the public domain, even as we speak. This equally applies to the conflicts arising from the implementation of major infrastructure, agricultural and other development projects within or adjacent to key wildlife habitats. How these conflicts are presented, discussed and addressed points to the need for a more constructive model of engagement between stakeholders in each of the affected sectors. At present, much negative energy is expended in reaction to emerging issues that impact on conservation. Within the appropriate framework, the affected sectors can instead proactively work together to achieve synergy. Our national development processes must integrate the needs of conservation at the planning stage. In turn, the conservation fraternity should avail its vast pool of skills, knowledge and resources to support such collaborative efforts. This must be a partnership approach built on mutual respect, which recognizes the value of each stakeholder. I am confident that it will be the winning formula going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished conservationists, the establishment of the Conservation Alliance of Kenya as an umbrella body for conservation NGOs provides the essential link between the conservation actors in the private sector and those of us in the public sector tasked with the driving of the nation's development agenda. It confers us with the opportunity to work smarter together and to get things right. I call upon the CAK to seize this opportunity to constructively engage internally with its membership and externally with all relevant arms of the public sector to add value to the national development agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, I can confirm that His Excellency the President is well briefed on the CAK's progress and that he is highly supportive of the Alliance. I will facilitate soonest the inaugural roundtable forum between His Excellency the President and the CAK to discuss priority conservation issues of concern that the government needs to address urgently. The National Wildlife Strategy and the Wildlife Status Report are among the key deliverables expected from my ministry. My ministry will soon formally call upon the and coordinate the necessary resources, vast expertise, and accumulated information from amongst its membership to support this process. This will ensure that the documents 
accurately reflect the state of Kenya's wildlife and our collective vision for its management. It will be the first practical test of our ability to collaborate within the enhanced <laughs> engagement model. On behalf of my ministry, I confirm that we will work closely with the CAK towards achieving our shared goals in the spirit of partnership. You can count on my ministry's full support and goodwill, and I look forward to your great success. With these few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I now take this opportunity to formally launch the Conservation Alliance of Kenya. Congratulations, Makazi <laughs> Kwenu.